Hello everyone, in this video we are talking about Discord and why they needed to migrate from Go to Rust for one of their services. So the service that we are talking about here is the read state service. This service tells you which messages and mentions you have read versus which you haven't. As you can imagine, this service needs to store a lot of state. It needs to store per channel what messages and what mentions a user has seen or what he has not. First, let's get to an overview of the architecture they are using. So firstly, they have a LRU cache to store all this data. Now, if you don't know what an LRU cache is, let me tell you a line about it. It's like a cache which when gets filled, the item which is least recently used or the item which is not used for the most amount of time is kicked out. Now, they had this cache to store all the data and every 30 seconds this cache is synced with a Cassandra database that they had for persistence and also whichever item was kicked out from that LRU cache was persisted in the Cassandra database. Now this service, this LRU cache was written in Go and this was the component they had to move to Rust and we will see why. Okay, now see this cache has to be super, super performant. Like performance is the reason they have this cache, right? Now, what they started seeing is in the cache node, there was C spikes in the CPU and the average response time or the latency every two minutes. And they were like, why is this happening? They digged around and they found all this was happening due to Go's garbage collection. To understand why Go GC was causing this or the Go garbage collection was causing this, we need to understand how Go garbage collection works. So in garbage collection in Go or any other programming language for that matter, it tries to remove the objects that are in the heap that have moved out of scope or there is nothing in the program that is referencing those objects anymore. So these are useless objects, arrays, um, etc. that go put in the heap memory and by removing them it can free up the memory. So what go does is they create a graph of objects in the memory. This graph will show that which object uh, is there and which object is pointing to which object. So let's say if this object has a reference to this object right like, like it has a pointer to that object then there will be an edge between these two. So this graph can also have like multiple islands like this or multiple disjoint graphs um, in it because it's not always that all the objects will be pointing to each other it might happen that this object is pointing to these two objects but then it has no relation to these all other objects right so what they do now they use a technique called mark sweep for garbage collection where they go over all the graphs and remember there might be multiple disjoint graphs where each node is representing an object. So the Go GC goes over all the nodes in the graphs and marks the node which are live or which are in use. So all the nodes with M written on it are the marked nodes or the live nodes, right? So it first goes over all these nodes and just puts the marking on them. And then comes the sweep phase where all the non-marked nodes, this, this and this, are removed from memory. Now you see in this method the GC has to go through all the nodes in the graphs or all the objects that are there in the program before it can remove anything. So it really doesn't matter how many objects you need to remove or it needs to clean it. It would be still going over all the objects. So in case of discord, when the cache size is large or when the cache size is increased, even if the GC didn't have much work, it didn't have to delete much things, it still had to go over the whole cache, all the items in the cache, all the objects in the cache, and that increased those, that gave us those CPU spikes. But now you will ask a question that you said that the CPU spikes were happening after every two minutes. Now why these two minutes? See, the GOES GC calculates the time between two GC runs by looking at the current state of the heap. But it can be max 
two minutes. So every two minutes, even if it is not required, there is a GC run enforced. And that gave the CPU usage spikes and increased latency for that service for exactly every two minutes. Now to solve this, first they tried to reduce their cache size, um, which did reduce the CPU spikes, but I mean, at the end it increased the overall latency of the services because they had to hit the database mode to get something instead of hitting the cache. So at this point, they decided to move to Rust. Now Rust does not have a garbage collector. What? You will say. Instead, it has memory safety built into the language itself. It tracks something called ownership, by which it keeps tracks of which functions owns which object. And this ownership can be transferred to other functions. So uh, when they are tracking this ownership, if the uh, function goes out of scope, the object is also removed. It's automatically freed and deleted. Now, by this way, you actually don't need a garbage collector because the compiler knows when to free which object. However, it does add complexity in the program because now you have to properly pass those ownerships of the objects from this function to that function. And I have tried a bit of Rust. Trust me, it sometimes get a little tricky. So in this scenario that Discord had because they needed that performance really really bad the complexity made sense for them the complexity was worth the performance improvement that they got from using just and yes when they saw the results it was indeed much better only with some basic optimizations it matched the performance of the hyper tuned go version and with even more optimization which i won't go into right now Rust was better than Go in almost every metric. Now you can see in this graph, the Rust is the blue one and Go is the purple one. You will see these spikes are not there in Rust because it does not have that garbage collection. And you will see the latency is down for the entire period of time. So you will see that in this case that Rust has blown Go out of the water. So what do we learn from all this? Is Go inferior to Rust? Well, absolutely not. It's all about the right tools for the right job. This was a cache which required a super high performance requirement. Thus, this is a case where Rust triumphed Go. But there will be more use cases where the ease of using Go and well, good enough performance from it will be more important and by no means Go is slow. Many high performance software like Kubernetes, Docker, CockroachDB, Prometheus runs using Go. So that's all I had for this video. Make sure to read the original blog written by Discord, which is linked in the description and leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content like this. Share this video with your friends on LinkedIn or whatever and see you in the next video. Bye.